Hey friends, Rita here. Just wanted to give a quick little intro into this episode and just give you a heads up that this was recorded like two and a half weeks ago when I was still dealing with some sickness. And so I'm not going to sound my best. Apologies for that. But I just was super excited to record with Liz and tell you all about email marketing and how Liz has actually saved me and helped with my email marketing this past year. Uh, So apologies on my voice and especially at the end as it sounds so hot, Uh, but we've got a great episode lined up for you here. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, travel biz owner. Welcome to my corner of the travel industry, the strategic travel entrepreneur podcast. If you're ready to have fun, be inspired, get clarity and take action in your travel business, then you're in the right place. Let's jump in. Hello, everyone. Happy day after Thanksgiving. Happy Black Friday. Um, I am super stoked for this episode. Apologies. I'm a little bit nasally getting over the cold. Us Floridians aren't used to when the cold weather comes, and this is what happens. Um, But super, super excited. Today is like a big day of celebration. So if you're already on the email list. If you've been seeing, checking things out on social media, you know we've been having a Travel Industry Black Friday event. And that includes our special guest, Liz Wilcox, who will be talking about email marketing. So make sure to head to the links in the show description if you're like, what is this Black Friday event Rita's talking about? So that you can get in on all sorts of goodies that are going to help your travel business flourish. All right, without further ado, welcome Liz to the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Podcast. Oh my gosh. Hey friends. I am so excited. Happy Black Friday. Aren't we all glad like gone are the days of getting up at 3 a.m. to go to JC Penney's and Sears and stomp over people for our children's dreams on <laughs> Christmas Day. Like it's so much cooler just hanging out uh in my house with Rita and you talking about. Uh, you know, the travel industry and how we can grow our businesses. Yay. All right. So I know before we like we officially recorded, I had mentioned about like, there's a lot of people talking about email, but no one like really gets into the nitty gritty. So before we like jump in, how did you get into email? And also, why are you so passionate about email? Listen, well, I love that Rita said that I'm passionate about email because let me tell you something. No one is more excited or passionate about electronic mail than Liz Wilcox. So (laughs) uh, cozy on up, like get get ready. And Mm -hmm. I started out totally, I feel like totally different than a lot of email marketers. Y'all, I was just like you. I, I just got into business kind of happenstance tired of, you know, the runaround in other industries. And I was like, I'm just going to, I'm going to do this myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And I started as an RV travel blogger. And I noticed after, you know, some digging, listening to podcasts, stuff like that, everybody and their mother was talking about email marketing, talking Mm -hmm. about making sure, you know, above all else, you get your email marketing uh, ish together, we'll say. But then when I started Googling email, I realized that a lot of the advice really wasn't for me. It wasn't for this, you know, solopreneur, as they say, it wasn't for the regular guy that's just sitting at his computer, sitting at their computer, just trying to make it work, just trying to learn how to connect online. It was talking about funnels and segmentation and, you know, like, pick the best CRM and all of this complicated stuff. And so instead of listening to a bunch of advice, I just started emailing. I just started growing my list. And as a travel agent, you might already have uh, something or, you know, leads coming in through a CRM. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got that locked and loaded, which is amazing. (laughs) Um, And I just started emailing like I was just emailing Rita. Like I was just wanting to connect the same way as when you see, uh, your friend talk about how much they love Disney, you DM them and say, hey, <laughs> I love Disney too. Let, right. Let's talk about it next time, right? So just connecting with those people one-on-one, thinking about email marketing as not, oh, I'm sending one email out to a hundred people. It was, you know, oh, I know Rita's on my list. 
what can I say to Rita today to make sure like, you know, she learns something new or she gets, you know, what I'm saying and she's excited to keep reading, right? And so that's that's how I approached email and that's how I believe travel agents and, you know, travel entrepreneurs can approach email, especially if we're working in a really fun industry. Like what's more exciting than travel? I, I started as a travel blogger myself. Um, and it was, it was so easy to connect. I, now I'm an email marketer. I have to guess like, you know, where you live, what you do, uh, what your interests are. You know, I really, I really got to work hard to figure out my email list over here. But when I was talking to people about travel, I knew what we both loved and it was so much easier to connect. And so travel entrepreneurs, they have the most exciting topic ever on the planet. They have the most excited people. And so it's actually pretty simple to just send newsletters, get people to connect and get people to book. Right. And I love how you also talk about it. Like it starts as the what is it stranger friend customer what's that oh like? she's so good uh, <laughs> that's my that's my email staircase so that's the methodology i came up with so first you have a follower right then you turn them into a friend and then you turn them into a customer and it's like you know think about realtors right they're very similar to travel agents and entrepreneurs in that you know who what realtor do i pick well, the one that comes top of mind or the one that I'm buddies with, right. uh, you know, I've known for 10 years, he says, uh, you know, if you're going to ever sell your house, come to me, right? That's my friend. That's my buddy. That's the one that stays top of mind. That's the one that I'm going to uh, sell, list my house with. It's the same with agents and other entrepreneurs in the travel industry. Who are we talking to? Or I'm sorry, who are we going to book our travel with? Uh, you know, who are we going to go for, go to for advice? It's the person that stays top of mind. It's our buddy, right? And so when we follow that email staircase, when we get people on our list, we turn them into friends, that buddy, that top of mind person, that go-to expert, so to speak, then we can turn them into customers. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, you know, here's how we can work together. Here's how you can book through me. Here's how you can get the best deal, et cetera. So follower, friend, customer, email staircase. Yes, um, and I love it too, because at the end, there's a goal. Like, I feel like when people are talking about email marketing a lot, it's, you should be sending emails, but there's no like, talk about what the purpose of it is, which is to be warming up people so that you're making sales for your business, not just solely to be sending emails. Amen. I just, when Rita said that just now, I thought of like all those gifs of like, <laughs> but why though? You know, like the guy <laughs> looking at the camera, like, right. but why, <laughs> right? But email, I actually just get, I, I wrote a whole new talk about this called why email, why now? Mm. And email is that way to connect. Y'all, we're recording this end of 2023, right? It's Black Friday. Uh, you know, maybe you got the holiday stressors already coming in. Uh, I don't know. The world seems to be on fire now for, you know, three, four years running. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm assuming we're not going to put it out next year, that fire. But email allows us to truly connect so we can know exactly what our potential customers want. We're not guessing. I have a very strong resume of seeing successful launches, having, uh, you know, referrals turn into bookings, uh, you know, like doing service providing at a high level for a high price. That's because I'm not guessing at my packages, my services, my products. Right. I'm talking via email to my potential customers. I know exactly what they want. For example, when I launched my very first digital course, and I know you guys don't have digital courses or maybe that's, you know, in the future for you, depending on, you know, what your dreams and ambitions are. Mm -hmm. But I had been emailing my list for three years. I wanted to launch this new thing, which I think is relatable for everyone, especially if, right. if your company that you're working under has this new package, right? Um, and so I have this new package, so to speak. I want to sell it. I emailed my list. Hey, are you interested in this? Why was I creating that thing? Why was I asking in the first place? Because I knew dang well they were interested. They'd been telling me for three years. Mm -hmm. I had been emailing these people consistently. 
So guess what? I had 141 people click. I did a typical open and close cart type of thing, right? And by the end of the cart close day, I had made 141 sales. Ooh. How is that possible? I, I mean, that's 100% conversion rate. I know I'm not good at math, but I can do that math. <laughs> How is that possible? It's because of email. And that's why you should be emailing because you can truly know when your company or you come up with new services and packages, you know exactly who to email. Right. You know exactly what to say uh, to get the right people to pay attention to that email, right? right? For example, I'm on an email list for something called the celiac cruise. I don't have celiac disease, Ooh, yeah. but I have an extreme, I have an extreme allergic or allergy to wheat, mm -hmm. as in like, I can't even have table salt because it has dextrose in it because that's derivative of wheat, oh, wow. which is even, I would say probably even more extreme uh, than celiac. I don't know though. Anyway, I'm on that email list. They know exactly who they're talking to, mm -hmm. right? They are talking to people who are terrified of wheat, <laughs> okay? Right. Right. And, and want to travel at the same time. And when they're emailing me, they're talking about, you know, like I love cruising and I, you know, I, the biggest pain point for me is I can't eat, I can't go on cruises anymore because I can't eat anything right. and I don't want to be in a state of allergic reaction and fear the whole time. Right. And so they're emailing me how they assure there's no wheat on board, how they assure we're having a good time, how we assure the food tastes good, right. uh, despite having such an extreme, uh, you know, restriction, right? And so honestly, if this company would email me more, if they would ask me <laughs> more questions, I probably would have already booked a cruise, right? Mm -hmm. I would have, I would have felt more comfortable, right? So think about your ideal people. Think about the people that you know are in your CRM right now that you know, oh, I could just say this and hook them, right? Like get them excited again about cruises, right? Like, oh, I know there's a certain percentage. Oh, I know Rita's on my list. Liz is on my list. She loves cruises. I'm going to send out this email and say, you know, subject line, only open if you love cruising, right? You know, <laughs> this is going to open that. And most people are probably going to open it because you're telling them only open if, right? Like right. you ain't going to tell me what to do. I'll open whatever I want, right? Reverse <laughs> psychology. But you're going to miss out on those people. And everybody checks their email every day. It's, those are just facts. You know, you're going to miss out on those people that maybe didn't see your social media post or don't have, you know, you know, you, for, you lost their phone number, so you can't text them directly, or, you know, they get 10 DMs a day. So they're not going to see your Facebook message, mm -hmm. right? You, you don't want to miss out on that. You want to send them an email. People are checking their emails. They feel much more connected there. And you can talk directly to those people on your list that love X, Y, Z. Yeah, I was something that popped up is I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, I do social media, I go live or I attend these events. So why should they choose email? Like where where is email in the critical components of making sure that you're connected with people? OK, so if you're driving right now or like walking in the woods, like don't drive off the road, don't fall <laughs> over, but like raise your hand if you were alive in 2022 and you remember when a billionaire bought a social media platform Ooh. and suddenly it imploded upon itself. Mm -hmm. Did you have any idea one person was so freaking powerful that they could literally buy an entire like piece of the internet essentially? Email marketing is the way to go because you own that email list, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't own that little birdie that has a new name. If you had built your whole agency and your whole customer base on that uh, on that platform that will not be named, <laughs> you might be screwed. You might be thinking, you know, where'd Johnny go? Where's Justin? Where's Chris? Where's right. CC? Where's Jerry? Like, oh, what do I do now? Well, I guess I better log into that CRM and see if we've got any emails <laughs> I can send out. <laughs> Right. You own your email list. You can take it whether you decide to use your CRM or you, uh, you know, you have your own email service provider that you put emails into. You can take it wherever you want to go. If you want to use active campaign today, you know, uh, MailChimp tomorrow, you 
own those email addresses. You can, you know, share what you want to share, et cetera. The last thing I'll say about social media versus email, social media dings you when you send external links. So if you're like, Mm -hmm. here, check out this package, check out this new blog post I wrote, check out this video I put up on YouTube, it's going to ding you. It wants you to stay on its site. Instagram wants you to stay on Instagram. Right. Have you ever clicked a link in an Instagram story and it says, you're leaving Instagram? Are you right. sure? <laughs> yes, homie. Yes, Zuckerberg. I'm sure. I am an adult. Uh, <laughs> I know how to use the internet. Thank you. Right. They want you to stay on the social media platform. With email, it's totally different. You can put links in there. You can, you know, that's the whole purpose to share information via electronic mail. That's the whole reason it was created. Mm -hmm. And so you can put the links. You're not getting dinged. You know, don't put 10 links, you know, three to five is good, right? No. Or even just that one, right? You can put that and it's not penalizing you. It's not putting you into spam just because you put a link in there. It's not you know, putting you at the bottom, even though you sent an hour ago, it's not docking you to page 10, you know, email is just email. There's not one guy in charge, you know, that can change the rules tomorrow. Right. And I think it's incredibly important, not, not only like the, the bird app, but also the face app has been doing a lot of wonky things with deleting posts, deleting groups, Um, and like, I've had some of my posts deleted and I've told people immediately get on my email list because if Facebook land ever tries to be like, we don't like your stuff anymore, at least you could still be connected with me if you find value in what I'm putting out there. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking of that. Y'all remember that YouTube? Linda, listen, 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 Linda, listen, (laughs) email, email, Linda. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you got you to do email. Yeah, it's you own it. It's and it goes back. The last thing I'll say about why email, it's for those real connections. And mm-hmm. when you provide a service, uh, you know, especially in the travel industry, I want to pick the guy I know. I know right. of, there's a few travel agents that if I book, I know which one I'm going to when because mm-hmm. I know them. Right. Right. I know, you know, John just moved across state lines and he's trying to, you know, build back up a rapport in a new place. I, you know, I know Joey and he's just starting out and he needs some referrals uh, because he just quit his job full time and, you know, dove into uh, the Disney travel world. Right. (laughs) So I know who to send him. Right. Right. That's the power of email marketing. And that's the power of like, if you can't make it to those networking events, you can't go all the time. Exactly. Right. That's what Rita said. She's like, why do that over going to events? Events are expensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, and maybe you have a life and you can't just go to every single event. Right. But you can send emails saying, you know, giving quick personal updates. Hey, this is what's going on. I just moved or I just quit my job to do this full time. I'd love some referrals. And because it's that more intimate connection, for lack of a better uh, term, Mm -hmm. you know, you're going to make those real connections. And as we know, especially in this travel industry, like it's not what you know, it's who you know. right? Right. And so get to know the people on your email list for sure. Right. And now I know a lot of people are like, okay, they're telling me to do email. Let me start email. How long is this exactly going to take me? Am I going to be distracted by this? Is this going to take like hours of work? So what's kind of like your guidelines? How long should people be taking to put an email together? What should be included in these emails? Listen, it needs to be quicker than a Black Friday sale in 1999 (laughs) with Tickle Me Elmo. Okay, get in, get out, get on with your life. (laughs) It's a newsletter, not a novel. We don't need, especially in the travel industry, maybe you feel like, you know, picture sell, right? And so maybe you feel like your email needs to be like so beautiful and aesthetic and your brand colors or your company's uh, formatting and, oh, you know, oh, I've got this cruise in the Mediterranean. I got to find the best pictures on the website for that. No, 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 no. Again, Linda, listen, listen, right. Linda, yep. are you listening? <laughs> um, 
you know, Tommy, Lance, whatever your name is out there. <laughs> I love um, Lance. I'm just like, I'm y'all side note. I'm an NSYNC fan and I'm just <laughs> looking at all the stuff around me. I'm looking at like an NSYNC poster right now. Uh, anyway, with the email, you just want to get in, you know, get to the point and get out, right? It's a newsletter. Mm-hmm. It's not a novel. If you don't have time to write it, chances are your people don't have time to read it. Remember, mm-hmm. I'm talking about that that like a connection, but a quick connection, right? This person is not wasting my time with a bunch of images that won't load or this long story about, you know, choking on a hot dog. And then suddenly they're trying to sell me a $3,000, you know, VIP package. Right. <laughs> you know, we've all been on those lists <laughs> where it's like, there's a weird story about getting Broadway tickets. And then suddenly they're trying to sell us their coaching programs. No, That's we like don't a, need a bam. Yeah, we don't need to do that. We just need to make a quick connection, short personal update, something about you, uh, you know, your agency, uh, your personal life or your business in the last, since the last time you talked to them, you know, in the last week or so, what has happened for me? It might be, oh, I was, I did a couple of podcast interviews. I only stumbled a little bit and felt like an idiot two times. It was a win (laughs) Uh, anyway. And then just segue into whatever you want to talk about anyway. What I really wanted to share today is two more VIP spots, Uh, you know, asking, I need to ask for a referral. Uh, You know, I'm, I'm this close to my goal and you Mm -hmm. might think, Oh, they don't care about my goals. They totally do. Because remember, we're trying to turn followers into friends. Friends care about each other. Mm -hmm. You invest into them. They invest back into you. So investing in them, you know, showing them the best deals, uh, sharing, you know, YouTube videos and blog posts that you do and others do, you know, Hey, I found this awesome uh, guide on the Mediterranean uh, this week. You know, it's not mine, but I thought you might want to watch it. And, you know, because we've got in six months, we've got the Mediterranean cruises coming up, you know, and so you're seeding it. You're showing how invested you are. You you're showing that you are active in your industry. Mm-hmm. I, I've mentioned Disney. Reed and I both are, you know, O Town legends Ooh. over here. What, what? Come visit <laughs> us. And, you know, if I know this person, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook of like Disney allergens because I, I have like over 50 allergens. I can, oh, you know, no. like, uh, Sad I can have turkey legs, rest in peace, like uh, the Mickey churro, right? So, I've watched a lot of that because I'm investing in it. If you can send me a link to something I haven't seen yet about mm-hmm. that, oh my gosh, this person is so invested in me. They're even, I mean, steal that idea, you know, like, hey, I'm not sure if you travel with allergies, but here's some resources I found. Oh my gosh, if I've been on your list for a minute, or even if I just joined and I'm like, oh my gosh, Rita is like really thinking about me. I'm going to feel so seen. I'm going to immediately, you know, binge watch whatever she sent me. And guess who I'm booking with when I decide to book? Mm -hmm. I don't even, that was a rhetorical question. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Because we all know it's Rita, the lady who cares about me, right? That's the power of email marketing. We can show we're invested. We can show we care. And then we can get people invested back into us by, you know, purchasing our packages and services, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How do we get people to open these emails? Because I feel like the two most important, like when we're thinking about data and analytics, open rate and then click rates are the two top numbers that we want to look at. So how do we get people to do both of those via email? Yeah. So it might seem like you have to sell your soul. (laughs) <laughs> but you don't, I, I promise what I want you to do is make sure you have a proper welcome sequence of, you know, the same way as if we're meeting for the first time about a possible booking, uh, or, you know, trip, you're going to set some expectations, right? Hey, you know, on this call, I just want to get to know your needs, your desires, what's on the table, what's off the table. Maybe we'll even talk about budget, um, you know, and then we can go from there. It's the same thing in your welcome sequence. You want to set, you want to get to know them and you want to set expectations. Hey, now that you're on this email list, here's what's going to come. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to email you once a week, or even if it's just once a month, you know, in, in the travel industry, you don't have to email all the time. You just have to email enough to stay top of mind. Okay. And so, you know, I'm going to email you at least once a month. I'm going to email you sporadically. I'm going to share tips on this type of travel. um, And I'm going to offer some free and paid services, right? Mm -hmm. And your free stuff might be maybe you've got a podcast. Maybe you've Mm -hmm. got, you know, a bang and TikTok. And your paid stuff, well, you know better than me what your paid stuff is. But it just sets that expectation of, hey, you know, I... I got to eat here. And this, you know, this is a real (laughs) business with real solutions Mm -hmm. for what you really want to do. And so just set the expectations in that welcome sequence. Now, how the heck does that get people to open your emails? Well, you've set the expectation. I'm going to email you. This is what's going to go down. People know what is coming and we put, when people know what is coming, they're more comfortable, mm-hmm. right? Oh, that's Rita. You know, that's Joey. Uh, that's Johnny, right? He told me he was going to email me and look, here he is emailing me. That gets a newsletter opened and then they're going to open again and again. So really it's more about making sure your content up front is really good that you're sharing those expectations, you're getting them excited about what's to come, Mm -hmm. and then sending a consistent newsletter that, like we already talked about, shows how invested you are, makes you relatable, and keeps you top of mind. That's Mm -hmm. how you're going to get those open rates up. Now, if your open rates are really terrible right now, I invite you to try to start growing your list and look back at that welcome sequence and say, where can I improve? Right. And then, of course, I know you're going to ask me about subject lines. So subject lines matter, but they're secondary to that from line, to that, oh, that's Rita Perez. I can't, I, I'm excited to get her newsletter. That's Liz Wilcox. I wonder what she has to say. But of course, they're going to look at the subject line second. So we do want to pay attention to that and just write the subject line like you were writing me or Rita. Write up your newsletter. And think of what is the gist? If I was just sending this to Liz, what would the subject line be? Mm -hmm. Put it there. It's not like a blog post or an Instagram caption. It's just, remember, we're writing to a friend or somebody we want to be our friend, right? Right. And so, you know, and if I'm sending out those, you know, gluten-free recipes uh, for Disney or whatever, I might say like, hey, do you have any allergies? Question mark. That's going to, that creates intrigue or, um, you know, Disney really sucks at allergies. You know, here's some tips or something right. like that. You know, something I would really send to somebody who is in my audience and has allergies. And of course, that's going to create intrigue. Not everyone on your list is going to have allergies, but again, it's going to, oh, wow, this person's really thinking about me. Right. Right. And so that's a great way to get your uh, open rate up. And then I think, Rita, you asked about click rate, correct? Click rates, yes. Click rates, meaning somebody is like clicking on a link, which means that they're an action taker. That's kind of how I take click rates as. I love that. Yeah, we want want a bunch of action takers, you know, like a Marvel movie. I love that. (laughs) I've never said that before. Write that down. Somebody send that to me. That was good. I don't want to forget that. We want a bunch of Avengers on our email list. <laughs> yeah, and that's see, that's a good subject line. <laughs> um, so to get people to click, the easiest way, honestly, so a lot of email marketers will tell you like one email, one job, you know, one blog post, one, uh, you know, booking page, one whatever. Mm-hmm. Y'all, people love variety. That's why, you know, Rita's having her Black Friday event. It's not just like this one thing you can buy for mm-hmm. one day. Like people love variety. It's the spice of life, baby. Um, And so to get your click rate up, just honestly, especially for the travel industry, just put this in the PS of your email. So the email can be really simple. Keep it super short, right? And then, you know, PS, when you're ready, here are ways we can work together. Mm -hmm. Maybe you put something free, like my podcast, my Instagram, you know, whatever. And then you put something, you know, book a call to see where you're at with your travel plans. And then maybe it's just a direct link uh, to your booking page or the trips that you have available right Mm -hmm. now. And 
And that's going to give people variety. Oh, let me, I'm just going to check out the Facebook group right now. I'm just going to check out her podcast. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not ready for a trip yet. Right. Um, or, you know, when I finally, oh, yep, I'm going to Disney. Dang it. This is the thing. I'm going on that Mediterranean cruise. I've been, I've been hearing about it for two years. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm going to do it. Guess what? I'm going to type in your name. I'm going to click on that link that Mm -hmm. says, you know, finally ready to book your Mediterranean cruise. Let's get on a call. Right. Right. And so that's a great way of just keeping a few links at the bottom of your email for people to click on when they're ready, when they're ready to join the Avengers, when they're ready to click (laughs) and take action. Right. Another way is just to ask simple questions and have them click yes or no. Like, Mm -hmm. are you interested in Disney travel? Yes or no. Are you interested in this Mediterranean cruise? Yes or no. And especially if you're really niche, if all you do is Disney travel, email is going to be click, click, clicking. Right. (laughs) You're going to have like 10%, you know, half of the people might click. The only people that don't click just didn't read the email. (laughs) Right. Right. And so, you know, do you want to see more allergy friendly or, you know, if you can't think of topics to write about, talk about, email about, just ask. You might have three to five ideas and you can say, you know, oh, I'm, I, I want to give you more about how to make your Mediterranean cruise the best it can be. Do you want more information on Greece, Italy, or some other country that's over there? I'm ignorant. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people are going <laughs> to click and most people probably will click on all three. That's the genius of doing uh click emails like mm-hmm. that because they're going to click on all of them. I recently did one that had five options and it was like, what's the size of your email list? When I tell you the majority of people clicked on every single one. Now, dang it. I know every you, I know That's there's only funny. one right answer, ma'am, Linda, <laughs> <laughs> Linda. And, and you know, shout out to anyone named Linda listening right now. I, I want to be friends. Um, but it got my click rate. It was like 11% within mm-hmm. 24 hours, you know, mm-hmm. which is really, really good. Huge. So things like that, keeping it very simple, allowing them to, uh, you know, click and decide. And that goes back to what we were saying about um, investing, right? You show you're invested in them by saying, hey, I'm thinking about this type of content. Right. And then guess what? They invest back into you by clicking and teaching you what they want. And that's a small investment that's going to pay huge dividends yeah. uh, when you are booking travel, et cetera, later. Yeah. And I want you also to know that if you're like, oh, but there's only like 40% of people opening my emails, uh, you are doing great. So I don't want you to be hard on yourself because I know a lot of people, travel industry people tend to think they have to have these high rates. And I think industry average is still 20% is the average open rate and two to 3% is the average click rate. So don't think like you have to have like everybody opening your emails to be successful. Listen, to be successful... You have to email, first of all, Mm -hmm. and then like your definition of success should be like, how can I make this better than last month? Mm -hmm. If my open rate was just 10%, how can I get to 11% in the next 30 days? What Mm -hmm. do I have to do? It's really those small increments that add up over time. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you've just got 50 people on your list, even if you got 10 people and one of them's your mama, you know, like it's <laughs> worth emailing. It's worth, you know, getting in there, making those connections. Because especially in the travel industry, you know, one right connection can have a huge payout, right? right. And so it's not about, oh gosh, I've got to get all of these people on this list or, you know, everybody needs to click. It's just making those right connections. It's, you know, making sure you know them and they know you so that, you know, one day you're going to get that huge payout. Right. And I think like that's when you mentioned welcome emails, I'm like, that's something that's important to note too, is that you have to constantly be building up your email list and building up the pool of people who know you so that you can have more people to kind of like pick and choose from essentially. That'll be like, Oh, I'm going to raise my hand up this time for this trip. And, um, 
making sure we recently talked about lean magnets on the podcast. So if you want to like go a couple episodes back, that's how you're going to get people on your email list. And what Liz mentioned is having a welcome email sequence that it's not just if you're giving somebody something for free, that you're also nurturing them because I love the friend follower to friend to customer because that's really what it is. There's an intention. You're not doing email marketing sloppily or just because somebody told you it's going to help you make more sales. So when you have that group trip or when a new product from a cruise line comes out, or if you're really itching to go on this like bucket list trip and you want people to come with you, you're not talking to like dead noise. There's actually people who are engaged and are like, well, she's been talking about this. She's been talking about this for a while. Let's do it. Let's pull the trigger now. Amen. I, I love that Rita just said, you know, make sure you, you're you building that list. And I really recommend uh, listening to that podcast on lead magnets because email, y'all, email is like water. So what happens when water gets stagnant, when it's not moving? Ew right? Yeah. I was going to say gross. <laughs> I, I'm like, you know, shout out to Disneyland and the submarine ride, you know, like just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, ew, gross, right? Don't, right? don't ride that ride. Like, let's just skip that one. It's, it's a classic, but that don't mean we got to get in it. <laughs> so with email, it's the exact same thing. It's like water. When your list growth grows stagnant, your email list, I don't I mean, sure, it stinks. <laughs> it starts to stink. You start to feel like there's no movement. People aren't clicking anymore. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not getting as many replies or I'm not getting on as many calls. I'm not getting yeah. as many referrals. So we've got to pay attention to that advice Rita gave us in that last podcast because We've got to get the water flowing, right? How do we fix stagnant water? We don't go out and start, you know, cleaning it up, pouring bleach in it. Right. No, we just get it moving. We get new water in and then, you know, the flow comes, things start working, the smell dissipates, life comes back, right? We see little tadpoles. Um, And so that's with your email. So you got to get new, fresh water, so to speak, Mm -hmm. into your list in order for it to be a thriving ecosystem. So you've got to be building your list. Yep. All the time. Just And it's like you're already meeting people in whichever way it is, if it's virtually or in person. And so that has to be a natural part of the conversation or call to action. And if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, like, okay, I get it. I need to send emails. I invite you to join Liz's email marketing membership because it is amazing. I've been using it for the past year. The if you're on my email list, that those are the email templates that I've gotten and um I mean you get email templates, there's a guided video, there are there's a Mad Libs template, there's like um examples on there. And not only do you get like chock full of that, so this is the annual pass sale. It expires today, the 24th. So if you want to get in on that, make sure to head over to the resources link below. But Liz, tell us more about, because I'm like, you get lots of stuff when you're an annual pass member of the email marketing membership. Yeah. So you can, you can tell that I am like, I'm not in the travel industry anymore, but like, I'm just a traveler through and through. Like my product is called the annual pass guys. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to the mouse. Don't sue me. (laughs) Right. Um, So when you get the annual pass, it's just like, if you got a pass to a park, you get inside, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what. And so I like to think of it as you buy a year into the membership, it's 108 bucks, right? super affordable and you get access to my membership for an entire year which Rita already told you gets you templates gets you walkthroughs gets you some foundational training there's a list building training in there you know if you're feeling overwhelmed by that um it has live q a but what's different about 2023 um and this annual pass is I don't want I don't want you to just buy this and just have all this stuff mm-hmm. like just sitting around right? Like, I don't want, just like you don't want somebody to just book a cruise and then just sit in their room the whole time, right? You curate the experience for them. You make sure they get on, you know, they 
they go to bridge if they want to go to bridge. They, you know, they're going to the right dining areas. They're on the, in the pool, if they want to be in the pool, you know, you curate that experience for your people. And that's what I'm doing with this year's annual pass. So you get the membership and you also get all my other products for free, but I'm not just going to throw them at you for the next 12 months. We are actually going to walk through some of the biggest products in the, in the annual pass So you're going to be doing them with me live. It's not just like you buy a course and you never do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be holding your hand just in the next uh, like 30 or 45 days. I'm not sure on the exact date. um, We're going to do a welcome sequence workshop. That's going to be two hours. So if you're like, oh, Liz, you you said a lot in a little time. What? (laughs) Like what is going on? This lady talks so fast. I'm going to slow it down for you. We're going to do a welcome sequence workshop. It's two hours long. And by the end, you will have your welcome sequence written. We're also bringing in a copywriter. They're going to do a copywriting training. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I have to create this landing page for my lead magnet Rita told me to do. I'm going to be walking you through how to write a landing page, how to zhuzh up a sales page if you want to, you know, how to zhuzh up your calendar page to get people to sign up, how to write better social media posts. We're going to have a copywriter in there and myself. I'm a, I'm a copywriter as well. Um, and next year in September, we're actually, we're going to do a whole Black Friday training. Ooh. And you might be thinking, oh, well, I don't know. I've never done Black Friday. Well, you're going to do Black Friday mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's going to be awesome. Yes, I know you have it in you. It's going to be amazing. And we're going to work two months before Black Friday to get this thing locked and loaded, ready for you to go so that you know, on top of whatever offerings you offer right now, if you wanted to create your own or you just wanted to make sure whatever your company's Black Friday sale is goes off perfectly for you, Mm -hmm. we're doing that too. It's really going to be this very curated experience, which I think the travel industry will very much appreciate more than most um, of like having this annual pass. I'm picturing like the VIP tour at Disney. Those are my favorite. It's like so hard to stand in line after that. That's really what it's going to be. It's this very high touch uh, program and service for low cost. Seriously, it's $108. How can I promise this? I don't take clients. I love my membership. That's all I really care about. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I, you know, I'm actually, I usually run this sale three times a year. I'm shutting it down. It ends tonight, Black Friday, 2023 so that I can create this very curated, you know, hand-holding, awesome experience. So by this time next year, you're going to be making as much money as you want with email marketing. Right. And I'm just thinking like $108, like that's one trip. That's your planning fee on one trip. If you're worried about like, well, where's the investment going to come from? Uh, The welcome email sequence, the welcome sequence workshop is well worth more. Like there is just so much jam packed in there. Yeah. I'm so excited about it. I mean, the welcome sequence workshop itself is like a hundred dollars. Uh, I'm going to be teaching, you know, to, to bring a copywriter in, you know, copywriters usually charge what three to $500 an hour. I do live Q and A's once a month and listen, if you show up and you got a question, I stay until every question has been answered. I don't take clients. I'm very, very excited about this experience for people uh, that join with the annual pass. Um, I'm sure Rita has the link for us and it's going to be, it's going to be an amazing experience. I hope you join us. Yes. Um, Sorry, I'm here having coughing fits (laughs) throughout. So I'm like, that is cute. We're going to (laughs) end. But I do have, excuse me, I do have my affiliate links at the bottom. So you can go ahead and make sure that you're located inside of email marketing membership with us. And if you need any support, you can always, excuse me, make sure that you reach out to me too, because I'm in it. I'm going to be re-upping my annual pass this year because it has been so invaluable for keeping me consistent with email marketing and um, really letting my brain <laughs> not have to do as much work putting emails together because these templates are gold. So 
Thank you, Liz, so much for being here. Where can people follow you? Because your social medias are a ton of fun to be on. Oh, that's hysterical. So first I'm going to pitch my email list because I'm an email marketer. Uh, um, You know, if you're interested in the annual pass, you know, check out Rita's link. If you just want to get a feel for me, you can go directly to LizWilcox.com. You can check out my website. You can see what Rita meant by having a lot of fun. And in the top right-hand corner, uh, there's a hot pink button. You can't miss it. That'll give you an entire welcome sequence template uh, for free. It'll give you three newsletter examples that come directly from that membership and 52 subject lines. So if you need a little taste before you, you know, put down the $108, definitely hit that hot pink button. And of course, on social media, you can catch me on Instagram the most uh, at the Liz Wilcox, T-H-E Liz Wilcox. Awesome. Thank you, Liz, so much for being here. This was a lot of fun despite coughing fits. (laughs) And uh, I appreciate your time here. Yeah. Happy Black Friday, everybody. I'll see you in the annual pass. Yeah. So many goodies are available to you. So make sure you head on over to the show description to get yours. Um, Other than that, enjoy your Black Friday. If you are a Christmas celebrating person, make sure you get up that tree. It's officially time. Or if you've already had your tree up, I'm sure like it's probably just chill back and enjoy the tree for now. But thank you so much for being here and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining me on the podcast today. Remember to check out the show notes for all relevant links and resources from today's show. See you next time.